Hello and welcome to Five Minutes to Spill on Apocalypse World! Yay! Uh, this is a book by Lumpley Games, and it's uh, written by D. Vincent Baker. Uh, it does not come with real post-apocalyptic bindings. So, Apocalypse World, a game of gumluggers and drivers and savvy heads and brainers, of psychic maelstroms and mayhem and murder and madness. This is a game in which I got to play a badass pregnant lady who used a machete to fight off some fungus-controlled zombie people. A game where former lovers made a desperate escape through a jungle filled with baboon sloths. A game where love has teeth and knives, and innocence is more fragile than a house of cards. So what do you do? Most players are going to pick one of a bunch of different playbooks and use it to create a post-apocalyptic badass. You might be the only source of beauty and hope in the world. That's the Skinner. Or you might be the killer with the biggest gun. That's the Gunmugger. There's weird psychic assholes called brainers, sexy fighting machines called battle babes, and the folks in charge of entire populations called heart holders. Who you are is all dependent on which playbook you choose. Then, after you've got your own personal Mad Max made up, it's your job to play the fucker. All you gotta do is say what he, she, or they do. One player, though, is the MC. MC stands for Master of Ceremonies, and if you're the MC, you're in charge of saying what everything else does. Somebody points a gun at that Weasley guy who's been stealing food from the hardhold. The MC is the one who gets to say that he bolts like the weasel he is. The MC gets to say what happens whenever there's a lull in the conversation, too, or when a player misses a roll. Apocalypse World does a great job of giving the MC specific rules for what to say and when, with principles and agendas. For example, the MC is told to be a fan of the player's characters and to look at NPCs through crosshairs. PCs are the protagonists, and NPCs are not to be protected, not even a little bit. There's a lot more guidance for the MC in the book, too. So what are the rules like? Sometimes when a player does a thing, it will trigger a move. Most moves specifically say something like, when you do X, then Y. Moves are just kind of things that happen, really, but some moves have additional rules to them. Everybody shares the same set of basic moves and then has some unique moves specific to their characters. So everybody gets access to the Seize by Force move, but only the weird psychic motherfucker known as the Brainer would get access to the In-Brain Puppet Strings move. And trust me, that is exactly as bad as it sounds. Some moves don't require rolls, but some do. When you have to make a roll, you'll roll 2d6, two six-sided dice, and add in a stat between minus 3 and plus 3. On a 10 or higher, you'll get a full success, and on a 7 to 9, you'll get a success with a cost. What that's actually going to look like is going to vary heavily depending upon the move. On a 6 or lower, which is called a miss, the MC is allowed to make as hard a move as she likes. That means the MC is allowed to say what happens next, to make it as nasty or not as she wants, as long as she's still following the rules and principles for the MC. Now here's a neat thing that's noteworthy about Apocalypse World. The MC never ever rolls dice. Instead, the MC just says what happens, always following those principles and agendas, and then always follows it up with, what do you do? That's because the game of Apocalypse World is about the PCs and what they do, and nothing else. More neat things about Apocalypse World. You get experience points for highlighted stats. So that means that at the beginning of every session, another player in the MC each get to pick one of your five stats to highlight, and then every time you use that stat, you'll get an experience point. It's a great way for the MC and your fellow players to tell you what cool things they want to see you do. Some of the level up options for down the road include switching your playbook, retiring your character to safety so you can start a new character, or even starting a second character at the same time that you're still controlling the first. That's right, the rules explicitly let you play two characters at once. Because why the hell not? It's awesome. Each playbook has a sex move as well, so why is this so neat? Because it means that sex actually matters. It's a pretty darn critical part of the real world, so it only makes sense that it would be represented in a game that's so much about people and what they do and how they relate to each other. It's also a pretty big part of the post-apocalyptic story genre, so having sex moves, these specific bits of rules that trigger when you have sex with someone else, makes sex matter, both mechanically and fictionally. It both requires and fosters maturity about something that's way too often overlooked in RPGs. So why do I love it? Well, aside from the fact that Apocalypse World is the direct progenitor of a whole bunch of games that are incredible, like Dungeon World or Monster Hearts, 
Apocalypse World has been responsible for some of the best gaming experiences I've ever had. Stories that I'm totally invested in from the ground up, both as player and as MC. The game is a primer on good role-playing, a set of codified practices that you can bring into nearly any game, along with an incredibly flexible and effective rule system that'll never get in your way. What else could you want? So, uh, thank, you, thank you for watching. This has been 5 Minutes to Spill on Apocalypse World. I'm Brendan Conway, and we'll see you next time. This episode of 5 Minutes to Spill was brought to you by Indie Plus. If you like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and check out Indie Plus on Google Plus to hear more about our monthly game nights and our other videos. Thanks for watching!